Hello, this is Tony Heller from RealClimateScience.com, setting the record straight about climate. It doesn't take a lot of detective work to find out who's behind global warming alarm. Newsweek reports that global warming alarm is driving children into clinical depression and dependency on psychiatric drugs, and they're warning parents to keep their children away from global warming alarmists. But this is very difficult to do because the children are being immersed in global warming alarmism by their school teachers and their school teachers are being trained to frighten children by the United Nations. At one time, local school boards had control over schools curriculum, but climate alarmists have taken community control away and handed it over to the United Nations. Meanwhile, the founder of the Extinction Rebellion is calling for rationing and the confiscation of private property, which also just happens to be the Communist Party platform. Communist Party USA, people and planet before profits, Abolition of private property? The father of communism, Karl Marx, says in his manifesto of the Communist Party, in this sense, the theory of the communists may be summed up in a single sentence, abolition of private property. People are not going to be handing over their private property voluntarily to the communists. This will only happen at gunpoint once the communists are in power. So why do you say that communism is not violent? Political power grows out of the barrel of a gun. A quote from Mao Zedong, the father of communist China. No one should be surprised that the proposed solutions to global warming are exactly the same as communism. There's nothing new about this. In 1988, The Guardian and The Canberra Times were advocating one world government to stop the greenhouse effect. Governments must yield national sovereignty to multilateral authorities able to enforce laws across environmentally invisible frontiers if the greenhouse effect which threatens the future of whole nations, is to be overcome. And that same year, the Canberra Times also predicted that the Maldives would be completely underwater in the next 30 years. In other words, they should have been gone two years ago. And one year later, a senior environmental official at the United Nations, Noel Brown, said entire nations could be wiped off the face of the earth by rising sea levels if global warming is not reversed by the year 2000. Coastal flooding and crop failures would create an exodus of eco-refugees, threatening political chaos, said Brown, director of the New York office of the UN Environment Program. He said governments have a 10-year window of opportunity to solve the greenhouse effect before it goes beyond human control. And here we are, 30 years later, being told that we only have 11 years left to save the planet from greenhouse gases. Not surprisingly, the New Green Deal means giving up your car and having your plane travel rationed. It's not difficult to connect the dots here, and not particularly surprising that global warming alarms started right after the fall of the Soviet Union. So if you don't want your children being driven into clinical depression by climate alarmists, it'd be a good idea to keep the United Nations out of your schools. And it would also be a good idea to recognize who is behind global warming alarm. A century ago, H.L. Mencken said, The urge to save humanity is almost always only a false face for the urge to rule it. Power is what all messiahs really seek, not the chance to serve. It's critically important for our children's and our country's future to get these child abusers out of our schools. I'm doing my part to make people aware of what's really going on behind the scenes of global warming alarmism. So please subscribe to my YouTube channel and visit Toto on the web at realclimatescience.com. He's been pulling back the curtain on junk science and propaganda for a long time.